Nan Hayworth is a former Republican congresswoman from New York who knows Congressman Scalise personally. You've referred to him as a friend and a mentor. Thank Definitely. you for coming in. Thank you, I Earl. apologize that it's under these circumstances. Uh, the latest we hear from the hospital is that the congressman is in critical condition. Uh, personally, how did you react to the news of this shooting and, and his condition now? As, as we all did with, with shock. And of course, uh, Congressman Scalise is a, a really very popular, justly so. Uh, figure in the House of Representatives, not just among Republicans. He's, he's a great father and husband. And of course, we have several people who have been uh, gravely injured in this event this morning. Uh, it's, uh, it's something you never want to hear. It doesn't matter who's involved. So it was a shock. And this was uh, practice for the congressional baseball game between yes. Republicans and Democrats. This is a long tradition. Yeah. Uh, the FBI is now looking into the possibility that the suspect behind all of this, James Hodgkinson, perhaps was motivated by political grievances. It's right. still early on in the investigation. Right. But help us make sense of this. What does this mean that, if that is the case, right. someone with political um, grievances yeah takes them out on actual Congress people in the most violent way. Well, on one level, of course, we can never make sense of these things because this kind of act is clearly far beyond what any civil society can or should expect. Uh, there's definitely, we all have heard it, we all have felt it in our bones, there's a level of desperation uh, that people are feeling on both sides of the aisle. There's been a lot of, uh, more recently, of course, because President Trump won this last presidential election, so there's been a lot of uh, violent imagery and talk directed toward him and directed toward Republicans. So this is uh, a regrettable uh, d d relationship, if you will, between what this man did and based on social media. Uh, he had uh, some pretty vicious things to say about uh, the president, about Republicans. Uh, but let's face it, so do a lot of people on both sides of the aisle about folks on the other side of the aisle. We saw it directed toward Hillary Clinton. We saw it directed toward President Obama. Um, I think everybody who has a responsible position in public discourse, at the very least, uh, should mind very carefully uh, how they use our First Amendment, which we cherish, right? Uh, and it has to be used responsibly. And I think we've seen a lot of, particularly in entertainment and the media, I think the level of cant against, particularly against the president and the Republicans, has been uh, so pronounced uh, in the uh, loudest megaphone, I think, in our public discourse, that people like this guy kind of get their fuel from that, probably. We saw President Trump speaking in a very unified uh, uh, manner. You have uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, House Speaker yes. Ryan, both kind of on the right. same page today Gracious. in Capitol Hill, yes. which is rare. Right. How do we hang on to this? And how do we prevent in 12 hours, let alone 24, regressing into what, what is in right. some pockets vicious uh, vicious commentary and rhetoric. Errol, you're right. You're right. And and there is we 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 are always faced with an opportunity as a nation when this kind of event happens. So all of us who participate in public discourse and all of us who choose to go on social media uh, should think very carefully about how we uh, address the other side. And let's you know, we we need not to demonize. We need to view uh, everybody in this country as uh, a human being, a fellow human being who uh, deserves our compassion and our respect. Now we're seeing images and names there of uh, the five victims yeah. from this morning's shooting. So much credit going toward the Capitol Police They're amazing. officers who, as all police officers do, risk their lives yes. to save others. But Tell us more about Congressman Scalise, not as well known on the national stage. I know right. you know him personally. Right. His family is coming up from yeah. Louisiana. This is a very uh, serious and scary time oh, for very. them. Just tell us about him and what you know about his family. You know, Steve took me under his wing when I was a candidate uh, and when I'd just been elected, as he did for all of us who were new. He was fairly new himself. Uh, he could not have been more uh, supportive and gracious. He was a terrific teacher. Uh, he's an energetic and passionate uh, man who uh, truly has the public interest at heart. He has a sense of mission and he conveys that 
and he's been very effective within the House Republican Conference. You know, he was uh, a leader even at an early stage in his uh, congressional career, and I know everybody is praying for his full recovery. Those images are just heart-wrenching. Yeah, and to, and to watch the video and to hear how mm. frightening it was for so many out there who, as oh. they said, felt like sitting ducks, felt so of vulnerable. Of course. What would be your message to people watching this who are, who are disturbed by what, right. what is happening in the U.S.? Let's all of us remember that we, we have to, to work hard to have a civil society that actually works. Uh, and those in leadership uh, on both sides of the political spectrum uh, need to convey a message that can be forceful in terms of their policies but shouldn't be personalized, should not be divisive uh, identity politics that unfortunately, and Errol, as you know, we were talking and uh, you are uh, from, from England originally, uh, the whole dream of being American, my mother was English, I'm a first generation American, the whole dream of being American is that we transcend identity. And together in this country, that's what we need to do. Uh, and look to how we can uh, uh, treat each other with, uh, with respect, uh, even though we're going through some very challenging times as a nation. And it comes from the top down uh, in terms of public discourse. And I think the President and uh, Speaker Ryan and Leader Pelosi demonstrated tonight, uh, demonstrated today rather, that they can uh, take on the kind of tone that we need. Let's hope this continues in yes. Washington and beyond. Congresswoman Nan Hayworth uh, from New York, thank you for coming in and thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Earl.